Are you curious about Real Housewife of Salt Lake City, Jen Shaw, getting arrested by the feds while they were filming season two of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, getting indicted on conspiracy to commit wire fraud and conspiracy to money launder, and the fact that there's like nine other defendants, and the fact that she's just still wild and out on social media? There is so much to cover, but this is a case brief for you so you can get caught up without necessarily engaging in longer content. That's all there for you. But this is just the what's the what, how's the how, and what does this even mean anyway? Psst, it's serious. This one is serious. Like it's, it's, it's tea because there was a lot at the arraignment that we learned for the first time that's kind of tea, but it's also really serious federal charges. We're gonna get we're gonna get right into it. Let's go. Hey there, welcome to the Emily Show. I'm your host, Emily D. Baker, badass lawyer and everyone's favorite legal commentator, breaking down the legal shit in the news and pop culture stories you want to talk about. I've been a licensed attorney for over 15 years. I'm a former prosecutor, and I'm a big fan of the cursey words. So let's break it down. Before we get any further into today's video, I have changed the lights to reflect our sponsor today. And I am so happy to share with you a sponsored video from NordVPN. You're like, Emily, what's a VPN? A VPN is a virtual private network. It lets you browse the internet more privately and more securely. The way it does that is by encrypting your data and routing it through a remote server. And you can do this on a desktop, on an iPad, on your phone. You can route through over 61 different countries or through the US. Nord will work on up to six different devices with your subscription. I know, the whole family. All of the device, or maybe just yours if you're a tech nerd like me and you have all the things. You got the laptop and the computer and the iPhone, <laughs> maybe a tablet, but you can use it on up to six devices with your subscription. Nord also has easy plugins for Google Chrome to protect your browsing, which I find very easy to use and use on my computer that I work from all day long. I also like that Nord has super fast servers and lots of bandwidth. Really important if you need to get work done and you don't want to slow down your internet with your VPN. And not all VPNs will let you know how fast their servers are, but Nord's are super fast quick. NordVPN doesn't keep any logs and they double encrypt your data, which is ideal for protecting your data online. And it can help cut down on those creepy ads that seem to know what you're thinking before you're even thinking it that track you across the web. All you need to do to check out NordVPN is use the link here on the screen or click the link down in the description box. Use the code Emily D. Baker and you can get a two-year plan at a huge discount and one month free of Nord VPN. They're easy to work with, easy to install, and it's what I use to browse the web securely. So I hope you check it out. And if you do, let me know down in the comments. Let's get back into the video. Let's just, let's get into it. Let's get into it. If you did not watch Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, look, there's only one season. It's not hard to get into. Jen Shaw was a controversial housewife, she definitely pushed the plot lines along. She definitely had her moments. She was the Teresa Judice, and willfully so, in my opinion, of Salt Lake City. She talked about no longer being Mormon. She talked about the fact that she is a woman of color. She is a Pacific Islander. Her husband is a football coach. She is polarizing at best because when she drinks, she goes in on people. It was a very interesting season. If you haven't watched it, watch it. But just know she was a more controversial figure. She she was not bland by any means. She definitely came in spicy and more so when she was drinking. But she flaunted a very, very lavish lifestyle. And where have we heard that before? <clears throat> Erica Girardi. <clears throat> Erica Girardi. So 
the lifestyle was on full display with the Shaw Chalet that is this massive, beautiful home. Uh, it looked like it was in Park City. I don't know if it was actually in Salt Lake City, but this beautiful home that we now have learned is rented. No shade to people who rent. It's a multi, multi-million dollar mansion, but it's interesting to me how when we get a peek behind the curtain sometimes with some of these housewives shows, we're looking at wealth that is being shared that might not be the whole story. And that seems to be the case here too. So I was live streaming about the Satan shoes last week on March 30th. I got off the live stream. I opened my phone and Twitter was going nuts and my phone was going nuts because Jen Shaw had been arrested. Y'all know I'm a Housewives fan. I'm not even going to apologize for the trash TV that I've watched my whole life because now I am ready. My moment is here and I can talk about law and my experience as a criminal attorney and Housewives all together. <laughs> and I live. But she was arrested on the 30th. The story goes, and I was in the most amazing Bravo clubhouse room hearing from those who had sources with production, hearing from those who were hearing the word on the street. Word on the street, this is a, this is a rumor, this is a rumor word on the street is that they were filming and getting ready to film the ladies trip. The cast go on trip. You know how housewives work. They go on a trip. They all drink a lot. They sometimes fight. They sometimes cry. If you're Vicki Gumbelson, you maybe pee on a bed. It's a whole thing. The trace amigas happen on a girl's trip, right? It's a thing. They were getting ready to go on a girl's trip. Apparently Jen Shaw got a call, told production and the cast that her husband was going to the hospital or was in the hospital and she had to leave and she bounced. She, apparently the uh, the FBI stopped the FBI <laughs> stopped the cast van and talked to the ladies about where Jen Shaw was. She was later located in another vehicle and was detained there and then was taken into court that afternoon in Salt Lake City and held over for arraignment that ended up being on April 2nd. It got delayed one more date because of technical difficulties. What we learned from the arraignment on April 2nd is that incident to that arrest or because of the unsealed indictment on the 30th, her home was searched and her assistant who was also arrested and charged that day, his home was also searched. And we heard about some of the things that came up in that search at the arraignment, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. So Jen Shaw got arrested on the 30th, came into court in Salt Lake City. If you've seen the pictures on social media, she was in full glam, right? Because she was supposed to be going on a girl's trip. She was filming. I mean, she looked great. She was wearing uh, like a knee high leopard print boot. What looks like it is a mink coat skinny jeans. She looked cute. I mean, if you're going to have to come out of federal court, I wouldn't be mad at looking the way Jen Shaw looked. I mean, at least they didn't go in at like 3 a.m. and drag her out of bed and drag her to court. She wouldn't, I mean, maybe wouldn't have looked nearly as cute, but they got her in the middle of the day while she was in full glam. She should be happy with the feds because of that. It's like, hey, at least they let her be great. The pictures are going to be iconic. When I talk about this though, the charges alleged are very serious and it's alleged with hundreds of victims. That means there are hundreds of people's families and themselves that have been upended because of what's alleged to have happened here. And again, these are all allegations, innocent until proven guilty, totally a thing. Also, the feds don't fuck around, also a thing. Those are facts on both sides of it. This is being prosecuted by the U.S. Attorney's Office in New York, the Southern District. They do not play, but... They also didn't play with their press release because the shade in this press release was glorious. I'm going to give you a bit of the press release just to summarize this from the authorities here. It gives you an idea of what the scheme is. And then I will tell you a little bit about what these charges are. And then we'll get into what we learned from the arraignment. And then we're going to hop out because this is a brief. We're supposed to be brief here. We're supposed to be just just breaking down the case a little bit. Again, this is Jen Shaw and her assistant, Stuart Smith, who were both arrested in Utah, March 30th. Manhattan U.S. Attorney Audrey Strauss said, Jennifer Shaw, who portrays herself as a wealthy and successful business person on reality television, and Stuart Smith, who is portrayed as Shaw's first assistant, allegedly generated and sold lead lists of innocent individuals for other members of their scheme to repeatedly scam. 
In actual reality and as alleged, the so-called business opportunities pushed on the victims by Shaw, Smith, and their co-conspirators were just fraudulent schemes motivated by greed to steal victims' money. Now these defendants face time in prison for their alleged crimes. Homeland Security Special Agent in Charge Peter C. Fitzhugh said, quote, Shaw and Smith flaunted their lavish lifestyle to the public as a symbol of their, quote, success. In reality, they allegedly built their opulent lifestyle at the expense of vulnerable, often elderly, working class people. As alleged, disturbingly, Shaw and Smith objectified their very real human victims as, quote, leads to be bought and sold, offering their personal information for sale to other members of their fraud ring. Working with our partners at the NYPD and United States Attorney's Office, SDNY, and with the assistant of HSI Salt Lake City, HSI New York, worked to ensure that Shaw and Smith will answer for their alleged crimes. As a result, their new reality may very well turn out differently than they expected. And finally, NYPD Commissioner Dermot Shea said, these individuals allegedly targeted and defrauded hundreds of victims, but thanks to the hard work of NYPD and our law enforcement partners, this illegal scheme was brought to an end. I congratulate the NYPD detectives, Homeland Security Investigations, and the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York for their hard work in bringing these persons to justice. Now, what I will note about this press release is that both the special agent in charge and the U.S. Attorney Mention the words reality more than once. It is not lost on me that both of these individuals are on a reality TV show. I think it was absolutely shade. The best line from this, no offense to U.S. Attorney Audrey Strauss. She, look, she used the word business person. I love inclusive language. I love that she said these were just fraudulent screams motivated by greed. I mean, it reads like the beginning of the Toddy Westbrook business partner lawsuit. This is a lawsuit because of the defendant's greed. I mean, that's where we're at. But HSI special agent in charge, Peter Fitzhugh, said their new reality may very well turn out differently than expected. Now, you wouldn't know that from Jen Shaw's Instagram, where she's been posting things like you find out who your real friends are and, you know, don't believe the hype and her new blowout and all of it. Her posts on Instagram are more tone deaf and annoying than Erica Jane's are for me because this woman's been arrested. She's been arraigned. She's been told she's facing substantial prison time. And by the way, the money laundering carrying 20 and the wire fraud carrying 30. Those are the maximum sentences. I don't think they'll get the maximum sentences, but after the arraignment, I definitely think prison time is anticipated by the AUSA in this case. Let's talk about that arraignment a little bit. I attended the arraignment by phone as an observer, as a member of the public, so I could bring you the information. This case with Jen and Stort is catching up to an underlying indictment. The underlying indictment was unsealed and served in November 2019. That indictment has 10 other defendants and Four of those defendants have already pled guilty. I have not seen that they have been sentenced. One of the sentencing dates is set for June 24th. It will be very telling what that individual gets sentenced to. So Jen Shaw and Stuart Smith are being folded or pulled into that underlying indictment, and they are on a train that's already moving. The judge has set this thing for trial at the end of October, and away we go. So Shaw and Smith's attorneys are going to be hustling to catch up because I'm sure that the discovery in this case, meaning the information that the prosecutors will turn over is a fuck ton. I'm sure we're talking terabytes of data that is being turned over. I would be shocked if it was less given that this is a financial crime and this alleged fraud ring has been going on since 2012. Speaking of which I should just reiterate the charges in this case, charge one, are the conspiracy to commit wire fraud, the fraud being this underlying telemarketing ring where leads were being sold and individuals were being defrauded. 
If you are on my Twitter or if you've looked at my Twitter, I posted some of the Better Business Bureau complaints about one of the underlying businesses here and individuals really laid out the way that they were defrauded and you can go over there and take a look. And if you don't see it, just let me know and I will point you in that direction. But it was this selling a business opportunity scheme that didn't really exist. That's the basis of the wire fraud. The money laundering scheme is alleged to have gone on from 2012 to 2019. Interestingly enough, they didn't allege it beyond when that other indictment dropped, which is so interesting to me. Like the money laundering behavior they're alleging really stopped after that other indictment dropped, where with Shaw and Smith, they're alleging that the telemarketing scheme continued through March 2021. There's also forfeiture allegations here, meaning the property that's listed or property that's traced back to the quote crime money or the money proceeds from these crimes can be taken by the government in addition to restitution. Or if there is no restitution, they can take property as well. Now with the money laundering, it's, it's very simple. Money laundering literally means cleaning the money, trying to hide the origin of the money, trying to make it seem that the money didn't come from this criminal enterprise. And the allegations in here are that extensive lengths were taken to make sure that this money was moved offshore, that money's origins were not discoverable, and that Shaw and Smith didn't have their names on the businesses that money was moving through. So that's very interesting in light of the fact that at the arraignment, the U.S. attorney said that Shaw and Smith were at the very top of this scheme. It's interesting to me that they were at the very top of the scheme, but they weren't charged in the November indictment with the others. That leads me to believe, and this is an assumption that I am making based on how this is playing out, that one or all of the four individuals that pled helped point the AUSAs in the direction or provide information that might have pointed the AUSAs in the direction to tie Shaw and Smith into this ring. That doesn't necessarily have to be the case. It could be that other evidence tipped them off once they had the initial group. But it's interesting to me that some of those individuals pled about three months ago, and now we're seeing this indictment come down. And not only did we see this indictment come down, but the NYPD commissioner saying this is the end of this ring, meaning they're not anticipating anyone else will be indicted on this. They didn't say that the investigation into this ring is ongoing. And with the AUSA's statement during the arraignment proceeding saying that they are at the very top of this scheme. So interesting to me. Other things that happened during the arraignment is that Bail was set at a million dollars or bond was set at a million dollars. There's going to be signatories on the bond. Shaw has to put up $250,000 of either collateral property or cash in the next two weeks. The court initially seemed to wonder if Shaw was a flight risk. And then after the government opened up and was like, this is all the information, the court was like, yep, yep, got it. I do believe she's a flight risk. She didn't have a passport that we know of. It was expired and that's been turned over. But if there is an active passport, that must be turned over. It's also interesting to me that the government argued that the 250000 in cash was modest in light of the fact that one of the businesses in this scheme moved about $5 million in the last few years. Most of it, the government believes, has been taken out in cash. Also, the government made note of the fact that on the financial statement that was provided by Shaw to pretrial services. And these are the individuals that are almost like probation officers, but for pretrial. So they are monitoring individuals that are out on release before they come into trial in the federal court, that in the financial statement, it didn't indicate any income. And so the AUSA was like, this seems unreliable. And the court actually called Jen Shaw's financial statement highly unreliable. And the attorney was like, well, she has some cash from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and she makes some money from other businesses, a lash business, a skincare business, and a fashion business, as well as the show. And all of that, given the court's like, well, why isn't it on your financial statement? 
look, that stuff needs to be disclosed. And the AUSA argued to the court that Shaw did not have a willingness to disclose. That wasn't quite the same when it came to her co-defendant Smith. It seemed that he had been more forthcoming. He was taking some more pretrial actions. It was clear that the court was more annoyed with Shaw and her counsel than with Smith and his counsel. From my perspective, listening in at that arraignment, interesting that Shaw has no property in her name. Interesting that she is receiving treatment at a facility called Lion Rock that seems to be a mental health and or alcohol treatment program. That is not unusual when somebody's out pending trial. They want to show the court their willingness to, to do better, if you will. And the court ordered no excessive use of alcohol, which made me wonder, like, is she still going to be filming Real Housewives? Because like her whole character arc... <laughs> is summarized by excessive use of alcohol. So I was curious about that. It was also interesting to me that when it came to one of her conditions of release with no contacting victims or witnesses or anyone connected to this scheme, that her attorneys argued to modify that so that it was clear that it was victims and witnesses known to her. I think that was very reasonable of her attorneys to argue, but also it goes to this scheme being, you know, alleged to be over a hundred victim, if not hundreds of victims, and that she might not know everyone that was victimized or personally victimized by Regina George. No, that's not what it means. It means that she might not know all of the victims of this fraud scheme because it is so far reaching as alleged and that she can't say to the court, I don't know if I have had contact because I don't know everyone who's been personally victimized by Regina George. I'm just going to make the joke again. I can't help it. <laughs> and that really is where we're at with this. Her legal team is going to be pushing to get all of the discovery and start distilling it. I imagine Smith's attorney will want to talk to the AUSAs. He is her assistant. He's her first assistant. It seems that he's an employee. And if he's an employee, I imagine his argument is going to be, one, my employer needs to pay my legal fees. Two, my employer got me into this. AUSA, what would you like to know? I know some things. Or at least that would be my advice if I was his attorney, which I am not. The Next court dates will be regarding pretrial motions. There may be more court dates before that, depending on what happens with discovery. That means, again, the information that's going to get turned over to Shaw's attorneys. And we will see how quickly this pops up. I'm very curious to see what the sentencing is for the four defendants that have pled. I'm also very interested in the fact that the AUSA in this case said that this case carries substantial substantial prison time and was saying that as it related to Jen Shaw being released and potentially being a flight risk from the government's perspective, because it was almost as if the government attorney was saying, shit just got real and we don't need her to realize that and bounce. So what we are going to do is have a substantial financial stick, if you will, to keep her from bouncing. It'll be very interesting. She's still posting on social. So, I mean, people are going to know where she is because she's still posting on the social media. It'll be very interesting to see if she continues to film with Housewives. I don't know if her attorneys will want her to do that, but maybe they will so she can continue to pay them. We'll see now that she's put up $250,000 towards her bond. Fascinating stuff. White collar crime in Real Housewives was definitely not what I was expecting this early in 2021. And this is the first housewife we've seen where she's in trouble for her own actions, not just for actions connected with something her spouse was doing. And this is kind of the biggest that we've seen. This is a very substantial federal case as alleged and 11 defendants in this fraud ring. This is going to be a big trial if it goes forward in October. And I will continue breaking it all down because damn it, I am fascinated. And white collar crime was always my favorite. So that is the TLDR on Jen Shaw. I would love to know what you think about this in the comments down below. Do you think this is wild? Did you see this coming? Have you even watched Real Housewives of Salt Lake City? And do you have any questions for me? I'm happy to answer them either here or on social media. I am at the Emily D. Baker everywhere on social media. I'd also like to thank again our sponsor, 
NordVPN. Thank you, Nord, for coming through. And you guys, don't forget to check it out. Make sure the government's not tracking you. (laughs) I will see you in the next one. Thank you for being a law nerd. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D. Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube. 